Good morning, folks. Several excellent articles to hit today across space weather, cosmology, the magnetic field, and climate science. We'll start with the last 24 hours on our star and find the dark equatorial coronal hole turning towards the limb. We've got its solar wind, geomagnetic effects, and the CME we showed yesterday to discuss, and we will start with the plasma stream. Solar wind remains at elevated speed, but has stabilized. The magnetosphere is reverberating with instability, but the solar storm conditions have quieted back down. As for the eruptive activity we saw yesterday, we know that several filaments released, including one near center Earth-facing position, but the coronagraphs show only the sparsest of plasma leaving the sun. What we described as not too big of an eruption seems to almost be an understatement. We will probably notice a shift in the solar wind, but it's not expected to produce more storm conditions. We'll have eyes on the solar wind and on the incoming plasma filaments in active regions as the activity still presents considerable eruption potential. Quick stop at the Slovak power grids to find that pretty much every anomaly and error there takes place during high geomagnetic activity. Same story we get around the world when they do the same study, and most do so without having a major solar storm in the data set. When that happens, the vulnerability will be quite high. Up next, we're looking at a paper identifying a giant arc in space, twice as big as the next largest large-scale structure and confronting face-to-face -face the standard cosmological principle, which is where this whole dark matter thing came from. Another piece of evidence against it here. Folks, the Cretaceous Supercron was thought to contain no polarity reversals for a long time during that epoch of Earth's history, but deeper studies are revealing that may not have been the case, and the notion of a steady and stable field during that period should be reconsidered, almost certainly them noticing the smaller, shorter-lived excursion effects. Lastly in the articles, a bold one, invoking the long lag time of increased solar forcing, they not only peg modern warming to the grand solar maximum of the 1900s and early 2000s, but now that it's over, they see that lagged effect waning and predict a shift from warming to cooling within the next 10 years. It's a big prediction. This lag not only lives in the atmosphere, but in the oceans as well. Folks, as we mentioned yesterday, the transition of suspiciousobservers.org is complete. While a few more buttons will be added, and while deeper looks and fly-on-the-wall podcasts are still happening for now, the site is now the portal for everything in the community, the Nexus, where you can also make your mark on the YouTube video content right there at the bottom. Submit your question or video recommendation. We've already got several dozen and are loving this extra involvement potential from you guys. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.